So what I was discussing was this, um, these problems. So if we look, we've got d dx of x to the n equals nx to the n minus 1. And so if we just do that again with a simple one, we'll say x to the fifth. We move this out in front, and we've got 5x to the fourth to one less power. And then constants, it um, constants just stay right there, kind of chilling out in front uh, without, um, they don't affect um, the, the, this power uh, model. So if we look 4x to the third, we would just move it and, we, and it would become 3 times 4x to the second or 12x squared. And then here you can see we've got this pi and e, which may look kind of scary. But really, it, uh, as I was mentioning before, sorry, you couldn't see the slides. So I'll have to figure out a workaround for that. These are just numbers. So uh, it would just become e times pi x to the e minus 1, whatever that number is and whatever that number is. All right. So those are how the power functions uh, work. And that's kind of a simple rule. And you're going to probably use that throughout um, derivatives as you learn derivatives, because um, lots of other things that don't look like power functions involve power functions. For example, um, roots are, are power functions. So if you look, for example, the eighth root of x to the b is um, x to the b over a. And you can remember that because if you just remember the square root of x is x to the 1 half, because then you can just remember, oh, look, that's the number of the root, and that's the power. All right. So the, um, the next kind of basic uh, derivative rule that we can look at is adding and subtracting functions. So this is really, um, this is a, another kind of really simple one. It's a no-brainer. Once you learn it, um, you'll think, oh, that's obvious. You just add the, you, the derivatives of, two f of a function added to another function is just the derivative of each function individually with that same sign. So for example, this, uh, we just take the derivative of each of these pieces and then uh, we add them all together. So we've got 2 times 4x to the 1 plus 5. We've got x to the 1 here. So 1 times 5 is 5. Um, and, the, and x to the 0 is 1. So it just becomes 5. And then this 4 is times 4x to the 0. So 0 times 4 is 0. And it just becomes a big fat 0. So they're the derivative of any constant is 0. So simplifying that, we get 8x plus 5. All right. So then um, moving on to this one, once again, we've got a bit more of a complicated one. I'm just going to change this to a minus sign right there. So we've got pi x to the e minus x squared plus 5, this golden ratio. So once again, the derivative of pi x to the e will just be, again, e pi x to the e minus 1 x squared, the derivative of that will be minus, we bring the constant out in front, 2x to the 1, and we just plop the minus sign, and then phi, because it's just a number, is 0. So um, once again, the adding and subtracting, as with other sort of finding rules for things in math, those ones um, are, gen are pretty easy. And that just means whenever you take the derivative of a function, um, you just take the derivative of each term, and then the pluses and minuses will just carry over from the original problem. All right, so next let's move on to look at trig functions. So uh, that's this is just a list of what they are here. Um, and uh, and uh, sorry, just a second, I. This, this didn't update here, so this should be like that. I got these um, plus and minus, and this should be positive. Sorry. I corrected one version, but not the other version. So um, you can see that um, 
it, there are just some pretty simple rules. These ones look complicated, um, but you just have to plug these in every time you see these. Uh, and actually later in the stream, we'll have an opportunity to uh, look at why one of these is the way it is. Um, so the, and so the really cool thing is these are the only ones you really need to know. You can, using rules that we'll learn later today, we can derive these four. So let's look at some examples briefly. So two times sine x, that two once again just stays as a constant out front there. So it just become two times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. All right, moving on to this one. Now this one looks a little bit more complicated because it looks like we've got a product. And that's right, we do. And uh, we haven't learned uh, the rules for product rules, but that's okay because uh, the more astute uh, among you will notice that something interesting about cosecant. And if you know what is cosecant equivalent to, you can drop that in the chat. If you know what the, um, what the other way of expressing cosecant is. All right, so the answer would be, there would be one over um, sine. And that means that if you look at it, it just becomes 5x sine x times one over sine x. We can cancel these <coughs> and it just becomes the derivative of 5x. And as we know, if you just have 5x, it's just the coefficient. So that whole complicated thing just reduces to just five. All right. So that's how you do trig functions once again. That's just kind of a simple one step. This is pretty much all you'll need to know. All right, now let's move into learning some new items. So, by the way, if I notice a couple people have joined. Uh, if you want to, you can. Um, I've got a poll down there for kind, of, so you can kind of answer why are you here, uh, just so that I and um, the rest of us can get a kind of idea of of um, people stopping by here. All right, <clears throat> so. Let's take a look at these two rules, product and quotient rules. And so these are for, um, when two functions are either multiplied or divided. Um, and once again, you can see this looks like a um, kind of a big mess, but it's really not that simple. So bear with me as we kind of look through what this means. So the derivative here of two functions multiplied together is equal to the derivative of the first times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function. So let's take a look at what that might represent. So let's look at this. We got these two functions, 4x cubed and 4x cosine x. So let's, uh, so let's look at how we might uh, apply the rule to this. So we've got our first function. We'll take the derivative of that. So it will be 3 times 4x squared times the second function, cosine x. And we'll add to that the derivative of this, cosine x, which is negative sine x. And then we'll multiply that by the first function, 4x cubed. And if we simplify all that, this, becomes a, this will become 12x squared. So we've got 12x squared times the cosine of x, and then we'll add a negative, so it'll just become a subtract, and we'll have 4x cubed sine x. So once again, the easy way to remember this is it's just the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative, no, the first times the derivative of the second plus the uh, second times the derivative of the first, and you notice I got tripped up there. It's for good reason. You can do those in either order because as you probably learned in elementary school, addition is commutative. So you don't have to worry about which one as long as you have each pair. Make sure you just, the one, the one thing you don't want to do is do first times second plus the derivatives multiplied together. That's not, but as long as you've got the combination of the two, you will be, you'll be, um, you'll be golden. So now let's move on to the slightly more complicated quotient rule. So the quotient rule, you can see, looks like this. 
<clears throat> so we've got the derivative of the function f over g. Uh, we can see that that will be equal to the bottom um, times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of, of the bottom over the bottom function squared. All right, that, that's a little bit more confusing. And you've actually got to remember it's g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g over gx squared. <clears throat> because subtraction is, of course, not commutative, um, as you also probably learned in elementary school. So let's take a look at how we might do this one. So we've got this bottom function, 2x, and this top function, 3x squared plus 1. So let's, um, so we, tab the, we take the bottom, and we'll multiply it by this derivative of the top, 3x squared, which is 6x. And then we'll subtract from that the top, times the derivative of the bottom, 2x. Uh, the derivative of a, a linear function is just the coefficient. If you think about it, the, <clears throat> that's the instantaneous rate, of, instantaneous rate of change. And if it's a linear function, the slope is always the same. So it'll just be, <clears throat> excuse me, 2. And we'll take that all over the bottom squared, 2x squared. So simplifying that, that will give us 12x squared minus 6x squared plus 2 over 2x squared squared, or rather, I don't know why I said that. Yeah, 2x squared. So, and if we simplify that, that'll give us 3, 3x squared minus 1 over 2x squared as your end result. I am sorry, that should be a 4, 4x four squared. Um, and you might notice, OK, the reason we, you might have thought, well, if you had seen um, Mr. Siddiqui's stream earlier in the week, you might know that, well, if you, that there's an easier way to do this for some functions. And that would be if you, um, and that would be if this, if you could factor this function. So if the functions are factorable, you should save your time. And this is a top tip that will save you tons of time on the AP exam because the quotient rule can get really tedious, especially when you're doing a really long, complicated problem where you might have to derive multiple functions. So if you can simplify, do it. That's just kind of a, a good math life lesson, I suppose. If you can simplify something, do it. <coughs> So um, if this were, say, I don't know, 3x um, cubed plus 3 over um, maybe x plus um, 1, you can see that can be pulled out of here. Or sorry, it's not the correct example. So if we had. That's good. I got my example. Sorry. This is my first time doing this, so everything's a little bit scattered out here in my layout. So if we had um, 2x plus 4 over x plus 2, that's a better example. You can see that this is just the <coughs> that this is just 2 times the bottom, so it would just become 2 and the derivative of that is 0. So um, that's just kind of a lesson. Don't have to do the you don't um don't do the quotient rule if it's not absolutely necessary so factor if you can and also factoring will make other rules re easier like the product rule and this next rule that we're going to learn about which is called the chain rule and these are used when functions are chained sorry i got an itch my nose together so if we're taking the derivative of for example this is what it looks like symbolically if we're taking <coughs> f of g of x, the derivative of that would be f, would be the derivative. Now you can notice I've switched to the Lagrange notation here. That's because it doesn't really make sense if you use this Leibniz notation. So it's the derivative of f of with the value of g of x times the derivative of g. And if you're like me, probably when you first saw that, you were so confused because if you just got it on like this big packet of derivative rules, like um, this big one I got um, from when I took AP Calculus, it's pretty confusing. 
symbolically. So let's take an example. Sine squared of x. And you're like, well, how is that two functions chained together? Well, <clears throat> you can see this little sine squared. That's the notation we, um, as mathematicians, used to donate to denote this. And you can see, oh, we've got this trig function inside of this larger power model. Um, and so that means, and so looking at how we might apply the chain rule to this, we take the derivative of the outer function with the inner function still inside it. So 2 sine x with treating the sine x as our larger x. And then we multiply the derivative of the inside cosine x. <clears throat> All right, now let's take another example, the tangent of sine of x. So <clears throat> we take the derivative of the outer with the inner function still inside of it. The derivative of tangent is, of course, secant squared. And we multiply by the derivative of this inner function, so cosine x. And that looks a bit messy, but that's just how you... Um, that would be how you calculate the derivative. Um, all right. So now, um, so we, so what we, we've done so far, um, if you've just arrived. So so far, we take, we took, we've taken, we have taken a look at power and trig root function reviews, reviewed those, and then introduced some of these more two-part uh, derivative rules: product, quotient, and chain. <coughs> And um, now, and so um, now we're going to move on to some practice problems. So let's pick up where we left off with looking at some now doing the main focus, which are um, eight practice problems which I prepared. <coughs> so let's take a look at this first one, and this one is pretty simple. This is just um, a polynomial with all of our terms chained together. So we'll just take this term by term. So we'll start off the derivative of this first term would be <coughs> we multiply the, the um, power out in front. So it would be 25x to the one less power, which would be 25x to the fourth power. And then we'll add to that. We've got 4x to the second power. Multiply this. 2 times 4 is 8. x to the 1 less power is just 1. We've got 6x to the 1. 6 times 1 is 6. And x to the 0 is 1. So you just have 6. And then this behemoth, because it's just a constant, we don't actually care about it. And so there's our derivative. All right. Now, if the more... Um, once again, the more astute among you will notice that this is equivalent to something. So if you know what that second one is equivalent to, you can go ahead and drop it uh, down in the chat window. Wait a second. And this is what I mentioned earlier, how you could actually need to only know the rules for sine and cosine, and you can derive the rest from just simply, um, from just sine and cosine. All right, I'm not seeing much activity. It's all right, it's quiet. There are probably better things you want to spend your Saturday afternoon doing than watching me talk about derivatives. So um, the answer to that is sine over cosine is equal to tangent of x. And so, um, but we're not, but we're gonna be uh, kind of, we're gonna be simultaneously like uh, a little bit more foolish and a little bit smarter than changing it to tangent of x. We're not just going to, uh, tangent of x, we know the derivative of that, but let's do the derivative of this practicing the quotient rule, and in the same time, we'll actually see why the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So let's set up our quotient, and we'll take the bottom, cosine x times the derivative of the top, which is negative sine x, and then we'll add to that the top, or we'll subtract from that, rather, the top, which is sine x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is also sine x, all over the bottom squared, which is cosine squared x. Just a moment, let me make sure. 
my notes are already here. So let's um, to be a cosine. Oh man, sorry. Wow, I don't know what I was thinking. Just looking at my notes, I've got my signs all mixed up. I've got my signs and my signs all mixed up. So let's start that over. Ignore everything that I just said. Man, it's like you forget what you're doing. Uh, all right, so we'll take the bottom times the derivative of the top. And then we'll subtract from that the top times the derivative of the bottom. Uh, and then we'll do that all over the bottom squared. All right, so this looks kind of messy. So uh, this is technically the derivative, but um, as Thoreau said, simplify, simplify. So that's what we're going to do here in math. So let's simplify this. So cosine x times cosine x is cosine of x squared. We, we can use that shorthand notation. And we'll subtract from that uh, sine x times negative, negative sine x, or rather sine x times negative sine x is negative sine x squared. And my, subtracting a negative gives us a positive over that. And you're probably thinking, hey, Sander, that doesn't look a lot like secant squared x. But don't worry, it will. Now, if you remember from your geometry classes, this is, or your, more specifically your trig classes, this is, a, this is one of the basic trig identities, and it's related to the Pythagorean theorem. So, you know, the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but if you do that with trig, but if you convert that to a more trig identity format where we do it based on the unit circle, we get cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. So that'll give us 1 over cosine squared x, which is, of course, the definition of secant squared x. Oh, sorry, let me just get another drink. All right. So that's just a brief example, and I hope that's kind of proved interesting to you uh, so you can see why the derivative of tangent of x is that way. And maybe it looks like we're not getting a whole lot of interaction. Um, so we might look and we might derive the rest of these uh, trig functions at the end of the stream just for fun. All right, next practice problem. Sine squared x plus cosine cubed x. This is... um. So you can see what if we kind of look at this and make kind of a game plan, we can see that we've got these two functions added together. So we're going to have to do two chain rules and an addition rule. So sine squared x, as we learned earlier, is really just, so if we rewrite this as sine x squared plus cosine x cubed, we can see what we have here. So what we're going to do is let's just start at the beginning with the, our first chain rule. So we'll have 2 sine x times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine x. And we'll add to that uh, this, the derivative of this function, our g of x, which will be 3 times cosine x to 1 less power, so 3 cosine squared x, and then We'll multiply that by the derivative of that, which is negative sine x. And we can clean this up a little bit just by saying minus 3 cosine squared x sine x. And if you wanted to, um, this, you could make it all sine if you wanted to do by using the, um, by using that trick identity that I mentioned earlier. But uh, let's not do, but that's a little bit of, um, that's a little bit of a, um, a step beyond um, what we would do um, in just a simple derivative, in just a simple taking derivatives example. Um, maybe not even on the AP Calc exam do you have to simplify trig of functions using identities. And uh, just a word about the AP exam. 
Um, I'm sure that one of the other teachers will eventually probably do a stream as we get closer to May on the format of the AP exam. And um, it won't be, I'm sure, um, if you're taking AP Calc, you probably have taken a couple other AP exams maybe, and you know that they're not in the format of a simple test you might have in class. So <clears throat> you won't literally have a sheet of derivatives to take, You'll, you, but you will um, use the derivative in a lot of other um, problems, but there will be very few, if any, questions where you just have to simply take the derivative. Anyway, so just the, just that's kind of a nice tidbit of information to know. So, but like I keep emphasizing, it's really important to have these derivative rules down pat so that um, you can do all of these, um, so that you can do all of these derivative, um, all of these derivative things in the context of a really complicated multi-step problem uh, without having to worry about what was the derivative of cosecant again. And of course, you can derive some of these things, but it's really kind of a, it's both a waste of time and um, a, an additional stress. All right, let's move on to problem four here. So we, so this is just a simple uh, product rule. There's no functions inside of functions, so we won't have to worry about any sort of chain rule shenanigans. All right, so let's take the first times the derivative of sine, and we'll add to that the second, times the derivative of the first. Move that out in front. And um, it's kind of convention if you've got a power function to put it in front. So let's make it look like that. All right, let's move on to our second batch of practice problems. Just a sec here. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Now this one is kind of, I would, I would think that this one is, might, might be the most complicated one uh, that we've looked at so far. So you can see we've got um, a product rule here. We've got this complicate, we've got uh, one function over another function. And then you can see we also have a chain rule uh, up here. So let's, let's begin to attack this. So let's take the bottom times the derivative of the top. Let's chain rule it. So we'll take the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we'll stick a negative, out, and it's the sine of sine of x. It's like a little one of those matryoshka Russian dolls. We've got a sine inside of a sine, which is perfectly OK. And it might not make much sense in the context of trig, but we're just doing kind of more algebraic um, manipulation. So uh, it doesn't matter that we probably never take this in trig. Um, so we'll subtract from it the top um, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x all over x squared squared, which will be x to the fourth. So that looks complicated. You're like, well, if the derivative, so this is the expression for finding the slope of this. So it both makes sense and doesn't why it's so complicated. Sorry, again, just really thirsty. Probably should have had that glass of water handy um, before. All right. <clears throat> so let's move on to this next problem. So once again, you might say, well, Sandra, can't you just simplify that? And I'm going to respond with, yes, <laughs> you can. But let's practice the chain rule. and. Um, do it like it's a power function inside of a power function, but you would always simplify that. Um, but let's just do this to kind of humor me. So we've got that multiplied by the derivative of the inside. And so if we simplify that, we'll have, well, so we've got that, which is a, um, but then, of course, the other way to do it, which will, of course, be 8x squared 
times 8x, which is 64x cubed. And then if we were to uh, simplify this, it would be 16x quartered, that's not a word, um, to the fourth power. So we just, once again, get 64x cubed. And so this shows that the chain rule really does work, but once again, it's obey thorough and simplify things. All right. Oh boy. These two are where um, it might start to get difficult here. So we've got this first problem. Now, if you were here earlier, um, you remember that I said that um, these, these square roots, these are just powers. <clears throat> so let's rewrite this. So we'll have 5x cubed added to um, x to the 1 half plus, you might remember this, but you might think, ooh, what is this in fractional exponent form? Now, uh, let's, let's reason through um, how we got to this. So if you think about it, well, that's probably because that goes there. Uh, but where does this go? Well, it might go, it goes there. So let's just write the rule. The bth root of x to the a <coughs> equals x to the a over b. So applying that, we've got x to the 3 over 2. All right. Now, let's take the derivative of this. So we've got 15x to the second power to this. And now, how do we do this fractional thing? Just like this power where any other number, just like we did it with e earlier. So we'll just move this constant out in front, 1 half x, and we'll raise that to this minus 1 power, negative 1 half. You're probably thinking, oh no, what do I do with that? I'll show you how to simplify that in a second. And to that, we will add, we'll move the constant out, we'll move the power out in front, x to one less power. Now, that looks kind of ugly. So, how might we simplify this? So, this just stays there. Now, this. So, that. So first off, we know that negative exponents, we can move them down there. Okay. Now, let's, now we might want to turn those back into roots. 1 over 2 times x to the 1 half would be 2 root x plus 3 halves times the square root of x. <coughs> so, um... Yeah, so that's uh, how you would simplify this um, this initial function up here, and um, so that's just one of your another big rules. Um, if you can convert these big complicated roots into things that are easier to do, do it. So change that into a power rule. All right, so let's take a look at our final example problem here. So uh, what do we have? We've got tan x to the sine to the, to, uh, the sine fourth of x. Uh, sorry, just a sec. Let's get that one. Let's get rid of all of our markings so our slide looks a little cleaner. All right. So, so what we can see here is that let's rewrite this using more traditional power notation. Um, and so, um, once again, we can see that this is a combination of two rules. We got a product rule here, and we also have a chain rule. So. Let's begin, and so we're always going to begin with kind of, so this is, brings us to another important point. When you've got these two rules combined, you'll begin with the one that defines the most of the function. So you can see the whole function is a product rule, but then we've got a chain rule inside of it. So once again, like those not Russian nesting dolls that you have, you work from the outside in. And that's also how you do the chain rule, so we'll work from the outside end. 
upside in. So we'll begin with the product rule. So we've got the first times the derivative of the second. So we'll take that, keep the inner function intact, and then the inside of this, the derivative of that is that. And then to that, we will add the second times the derivative of that. Oh boy, that is pretty confusing. But, and so we'll sine cubed x cosine x plus sine to the fourth x secant squared x. That's a bunch of trig functions strewn together. And um, I, I will, well actually let's take the time to simplify that out. So um, what we would have would be 4 times sine x over cosine x times sine cubed of x times cosine x plus sine to the fourth of x times 1 over cosine squared x. Let me just clean, clean up a little bit more down here. So you can see that what we can do is we can cancel these and combine these two. So we've got 4 sine to the 4th x plus sine to the 4th x over cosine squared x. Um, so, uh, and then this can be simplified further into tangent, uh, but that's basically the gist of going through um so let's so of going through product quotient chain rules introducing those putting those into practice and then uh reviewing some of those addition subtraction um addition subtraction uh power and um trig rules all right so um looks like we've got a little ways left so um if you have a question feel free to leave it on um, a problem you might like help with um there are some more advanced rules that we could go into but um so if you have those but if no one has any questions which is perfectly fine i can just go into um we can spend our last few minutes here deriving the other four trig functions uh just for kind of <clears throat> enjoyment's sake. So we'll wait here for, a, we'll call it 20 seconds. Now let's get some, there we go. Oh, look, turn on the fireplace in the background since it's getting kind of chilly. All right, it looks like no one has any questions here. So let's just kind of for fun go back and derive these. So let me actually and then we'll go down here and well bam. All right, so let me, and let me once again clean up this graphic here because some typos. So, and so let's look at how we can derive uh, the, these four from just these top two, from sine x equals cosine x and ddx cosine x equals negative sine x. And a uh, really kind of um, neat little trick to remember which ones are positive and negative is that the ones that are if it if the function begins with a c it is a, a um <clears throat> it is a um the the value of that function uh the it'll be a negative so if you don't want to get c's in school or I, at least i didn't want to get i don't want to get c's in school so those will be negative and then the other ones will be positive so let's um we've already looked at tangent squared but let's look at how do we get secant x tangent x for secant 
this. So we're taking the derivative of secant x and secant x, so we're taking the derivative of 1 over cosine x. Once again, I know it's really confusing. I don't know why secant and cosecant um, sound like they're the opposite of what they should be. It's just what uh, the guys who sat around the table when they decided how math worked said so. Um, so let's take a look at what that might be. Now, what we've turned this simple trig function into a quotient rule. So let's do the quotient rule. So we'll take the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is 0, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So what we have is we've got 0 minus negative. Uh, sorry, just a second. All right, so sorry about that. Just had to take a little delay there. Something came up. Uh, so we've got 0 minus negative sine x over cosine squared x. So that is, of course, equal to sine x over cosine squared x. And if we simplify that, you can see that that's sine x times 1 over cosine squared x. which is, of course, equal to secant. So then <clears throat> let's move up here. So we've got sine x times secant squared x. Um, and then if we, so, so that, if we look, that's really sine, so we can simplify that um, into that. So then we'll get tangent x secant x just like that. All right, so moving on to, let's take a look at deriving our next function, okay, which is, let's derive cosecant now from these, just these top two rules. Once again, sorry, the pluses and minuses are all messed up. Um, I was trying to, the, the way that I've got to input these is kind of clunky. So I messed it up. It must have gotten mixed up with some of the coding in there. So cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine x. So now let's do the product rule for this. So we've got the top, or rather we've got the bottom times the derivative of the top, plus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. That should be a negative sign. Once again, remember, get your product rule straight. So we've got negative cosine x over sine squared x. Now let's do some uh, trig to simplify this. So we've got negative cosine x over sine x uh, times sine x. So um, that will, of course, be equivalent to negative cotangent x times the cosecant of x. All right, one more. We're in the home stretch here for this last trig derivative. Oh. Ah. Once again, remember, if you've got any questions, drop them either in the chat or in the specific little ask a question box in Crowdcast. Um, let me just make sure this should be a positive, negative, positive. All right. So next kind of, um, well, this is the most complicated one to derive, I suppose. Or sign. X. Um, so let's now um, 
take so let's now do our final product rule here. So we'll take the bottom times the derivative of the top. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine x minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom square. And you might think, and then you notice this does look a lot like your derivative for tangent um, as it kind of should. So um, let's, all right. So now let's do the simplification. So we've got negative sine squared x minus cosine squared x over sine squared x. All right, so if we look, we can see that this, um, <clears throat> we can see that this is really equal to cosine squared x plus sine squared x over sine squared x. Using that same trick identity from earlier tonight, we can see that that's equal to one over sine squared x, which is of course equal to negative missing my negative signs out in front there. So it is equal to negative cosecant. Whoop, keep hitting the button on my stylus. Cosecant squared x. Uh, so there we go. Um, I hope that was kind of a little fun extra activity that we did there um, to look at what the derivatives of um, those um, of those other four uh, and so that's, once again, it really, ideally, um, you, sh you wouldn't have to do those on the AP Calc exam. But, you know, you might, things will, things obviously don't always go exactly as planned. So, um, it's a, so you might have to quickly rederive those. Uh, so, once again, um, that kind of brings me to the end of my extended program. So, once again, if you've got any questions. Feel free to drop in. It looks like we got about half of us here are Calc students. Currently, on my I took the AP Calc course last year, so <clears throat> I kind of so I've got pretty recent idea of the curriculum. I'm not exactly sure if anything's changed, but um, yeah. So that's um, all right. Just a sec. So let me stop that. So we can go back here. So um, yeah. So. That's kind of an introduction to how um, to derivatives and look at a lot of examples. I know that's really kind of a high volume of examples to look at um, for uh, for a single stream, and so it can get kind of tiring. Um, but yeah, so once again, if you've got any final questions before we wrap things up here tonight, drop them in the chat. Thanks, it's been really fun.